video is sponsored by Artlist. This is the Leica M11P, the culmination of almost a century of Leica's storied history producing some of the world's finest cameras. The M11P offers some creature comforts of modern cameras. However, it lacks just about everything else that you'd expect of a camera released in 2023. Autofocus? Nope. Video recording? Not a chance. Image stabilization? Negative. So why on earth would anyone pay $9,200 for one? And that's not even considering the cost of a lens, which can easily cost upwards of $5,000. Well, for the last 30 days, I've been shooting exclusively on the Leica M11P to try to answer this question. Let's get into it. Okay, so a brief disclaimer. The Leica M11P is on a long-term loan from B&H Photo, and I do have to send it back, but all of my opinions are completely my own. No one gets to see this video before you do, and Leica doesn't even know this video exists. That said, I buy pretty much all of my camera gear from B&H, and if you're ever interested in any of the gear that I talk about on this channel, there's always a link to said gear in the description of my videos. Again, those aren't sponsored either, but they're affiliate links that provide a small commission to me at no cost to you. But it does help me keep the lights on to make more videos like this. Okay, so with that housekeeping out of the way, the Leica M11P. I've been testing this with the Summicron 28mm f2 lens, and I really wanted to challenge myself to use only this combo for at least 30 days to really put it through rigorous testing. I shot automotive, brand work, lifestyle, travel, landscapes, not always stuff that's typically associated with Leica cameras. And I'll just say that this is by far the most fun I've had making photos in a long time. Also, quick heads up, all the photos shown on this video were edited with a new Everyday Essential preset pack that I made with my buddy Andrew. It includes six presets that I've been using for almost all of my edits lately, and best yet, it is completely free to download at the link in the description. Just toss me a like or a sub or you know, a thumbs up if you're feeling generous. Now, this camera is by no means perfect, and we'll go into why in a second, but first let me talk about some of the things that I really, really enjoy about this camera. And a quick aside for those that are not aware, the M11P is effectively the same as the M11, but for 200 extra dollars that you pay for the M11P, you get the removal of the Leica logo, Leica script engraved on the top plate, Sapphire rear LCD, and 250 gigabytes of internal storage. You also get content credentials, which in today's AI world helps you prove that a real person took a real photo by embedding your copyright and ownership information into the metadata whenever you take a photo. Personally, I don't think any of these things are particularly necessary, but if you're already spending nine grand on a camera, I imagine the extra $200 is probably not an issue for you. So the first thing that I absolutely love about the M11P is the overall build and user experience. Leica has been making these M-style cameras for almost a century, and the small tweaks that they've made over the years make this an incredibly simple yet powerful system. It gives you just enough to make the photography experience very enjoyable and leaves out literally everything else. There's a shutter dial that somehow is simultaneously perfectly smooth and perfectly resistant. The ISO dial mechanism has this kind of twist up, turn, and press down to lock that is just like, so damn satisfying. And then of course you have your aperture that's set on your extremely overpriced lens. There's also one additional programmable dial on the back here. I have that set to exposure compensation, which is useful for doing something like aperture priority, but that has some strange quirks that we'll get to in a little bit. But beyond that, you basically just have three other programmable buttons. A top programmable button that is set, I have set to focus magnification when using the LCD screen. Then a function button, which I have set to turn off and on that LCD screen. And then you can also program the clickable portion of that extra dial. I have mine set to white balance, which I use a lot. And again, we will talk about that more in a minute. Like all Leica cameras these days, the menu UI is amongst the simplest and most intuitive that you'll ever use. But honestly, once the initial setup is configured, I've rarely found myself using it at all since the camera is void of so many fancy features that there's not much reason to actually go in and change anything. This thing is literally built like a tank as well. Like, it's quite heavy. So much so that I actually smashed my nose open one of the first days when I was putting the strap around my neck. And I think some might find it too heavy given the lack of like a real grip, but I actually quite like it so long as you always have a strap on it, which I always did. The image quality on the M11P is seriously next level. 
That 60 megapixel sensor is the same one that's in the Q3 and the SL3, and it gives you insane detail and sharpness. And the color rendition is just scrumptious. You get these really true to life tones that make your images pop in a way that's kind of really hard to describe. The first time that you look at these images, you will be blown away. Coupled with Leica's legendary M lenses, like the Summicron that I've been using, you get this very distinctive Leica look. Rich, vibrant, sharp, great micro contrast, and just full of character. Like all Leica M cameras, the M11P is a rangefinder. Using a rangefinder can be a steeper learning curve, and it's kind of like stepping back in time, offering this tactile, deliberate shooting experience. It's a system that encourages you to slow down and engage really deeply with whatever it is you're photographing. While it may not be as fast and reliable as autofocus and you're gonna miss a lot, the satisfaction of nailing a shot with a rangefinder is truly one of the best feelings. Like I was able to get these panning slow shutter images of my buddy Johnny's Safari Porsche, just tack sharp and I was super pumped about that. With today's AI autofocus and car tracking, this obviously could have been super easy, but there's something special about nailing it on your own. Could you achieve these images just as easily with many other cameras? Obviously, but the experience of doing it wouldn't be the same. Now, whether you're capturing panning shots on a Leica or another camera, or you're just using the camera in general, nowadays you probably wanna have some awesome music to go along with whatever content you're producing which is why I'm stoked that this video is sponsored by Artlist. I have tried just about every stock music solution under the sun, and let me tell you, Artlist is far and away the best. Artlist offers access to unlimited downloads of over 22,000 quality songs and 27,000 sound effects that are updated daily. Songs are categorized by mood, genre, video themes, and instrumentals. So it's super quick and easy to find a dope track, find some perfect sound effects to go for your sound design, and get back to the important thing, creating. So like all of the sound effects that you just heard in that little pour sequence, all thanks to Artlist. They've got subscriptions for all types of creators, including a pro subscription that includes licensing for use on client projects. And they have a new AI voiceover feature that gives you high quality voiceovers on the models that are trained by true professional voice actors. And all you have to do is type in what you want them to say. But even better, if you pop over to the link in the description, you'll get two free months whenever you sign up for your subscription. And a huge thank you to Artlist for being a longtime sponsor of the channel and really kind of helping me to make this YouTube thing possible. I think this combination of simplicity and the purity of the art of photography is what makes the M11P so special. But as I mentioned, Leica has been making their M series cameras for decades, many of which are much cheaper, albeit still very expensive. So why would you choose the M11P or even the M11 over some of their older models like the M10, M9, M240? Well, the M11P has a few things that help it stand out. First is that 60 megapixel sensor, which gives you both incredible resolution and the ability to crop to your heart's content. So if you're only using a 28 millimeter lens like I was, then you're still able to crop in for more detailed shots. The M11 and M11P also have access to the Leica Photos app, which is far and away the best camera app of any of the camera brands. It connects quickly, the UI is fantastic, Firmware updates can easily be managed through the app, and you can quickly, like quickly, download raw images wirelessly. As I mentioned earlier, the M11P also gives you access to 256 gigabytes of internal storage. Is this necessary? Definitely not, but it can be useful for a few reasons. Potentially the most useful is that dreaded situation that every photographer has had at some point. You get to a shoot and you realize, your SD card is still in the computer. Well, no worries because you've got plenty of storage on the internal storage as a backup. The other nice thing about the M11P is it allows you to do dual storage capture. So maybe you're shooting something important like a wedding and you want a second copy of everything. Well, you're good to go despite not having dual card slots. I personally have mine set up for raw DNGs to be captured on the SD card and then JPEGs to be stored on the internal drive. Leica's color science is truly exceptional straight out of camera, so I know many folks often shoot JPEG, and I like having them split out to separate places because it makes it a little bit easier for file management. Okay, so enough gushing about the M11P, because as much as I absolutely love this camera, it has some quirks, and a few of them are pretty difficult to deal with. The first bucket I'm gonna lump together is just kind of general issues with shooting. Probably the most obvious is that it's a rangefinder. There's kind of countless compositions where being limited to looking through a viewfinder just isn't gonna cut it. 
And like, technically you're not limited to the viewfinder because you can still do live view on the LCD screen, but admittedly, this can still be an issue because it's a fixed screen. With, you know, typical autofocus cameras, you could maybe get away with a fixed screen because you're just kind of like generally getting the composition right. And then, you know, if you're shooting high or low, you could just kind of hand it up there and then autofocus will do the work with you, for you rather. But with a rangefinder or live view LCD screen, it's really difficult to get, you know, accurate compositions and nail focus when you're in like kind of weird positions. I just kind of wouldn't mind having the same tilt screen that's on the Q3. It's easily one of the most solidly built tilt screens out there and it's there when you need it. And I found myself wanting it on the M11P more than I thought. On the topic of live view, I would love to see Leica do something other than just focus magnification for manual focus. Like manual focus on the Nikon's latest Z series cameras, you have this little focus box. And then once the thing that's in that box is in focus, it'll turn green. To me, this feels much more like a rangefinder experience translated to a modern EVF or LCD screen. And I would like to see Leica do that with their cameras. So while these quirks are kind of excusable as part of the fun of a rangefinder, one thing that I have a really big issue with is metering. For some reason, metering often makes some crazy jumps when switching from landscape to portrait orientation. It, it like switches the freaking the stupid, isn't it? The, Leica is stupid. Just say it. It is. It is stupid. Leica yeah. is stupid. You know what's better? Get one of these. You should. You absolutely should. Just get this one. You should. It's much smarter. That same lighting will be there, but for some reason it'll get way brighter. I've tried multiple metering modes, but the problem kind of still persists. This is much more obnoxious when you're using something like auto shutter or auto ISO, since it actually changes your exposure substantially. And I know a lot of Leica shooters do like making use of those modes. In a similar vein, the auto white balance is, it's not great. It shifts pretty significantly sometimes between shots, even when you haven't moved or kind of changed your composition. Hence why I typically set my white balance manually using that kind of button dial press that we were talking about earlier. Powering on the camera is also way too slow for how expensive the camera is. Typically it takes around three to four seconds, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that will definitely be enough for you to miss a shot from time to time. But hey, the battery life is actually quite good. So you can probably get away with just kind of keeping it on most of the time. Now, the Leica M11 is pretty notorious for freezing. It'll just freeze, give you this weird pinwheel, and then you have to pop the battery out and then put it back in to reset it. Certainly an inconvenience, and it feels pretty unacceptable for something that costs $9,000. I'll say that in my experience, the M11P has only had two instances of freezing over the last 30 days, which is much less often than I've seen people report on the M11. Still, for a $9,000 camera, it feels like something that should just never happen. I did experience a different weird issue where the camera did freeze, but not in the same pinwheel way. What it did is it, it kind of full on froze and nothing would respond, but it was still showing things on the screen. And I did that hard reset with the battery and it would start to work again, but only for like 10 seconds. And then it would freeze again in the same way. If I waited long enough, like multiple minutes, then I got an SD card error, which is super weird. Cause I literally took a V90 card out of my Q3 and put it directly into the Leica MP. I then tried a second card that was a different brand and the same thing happened. But then I tried a third, again, different brand, and it's been fine ever since. I don't wanna necessarily name the other brands of cards because I don't know for a fact that it was the cards and not the Leica, but the one that is working for me now is a pro grade. So if that matters to you, then there you go. So like at this point, I feel super torn about my feelings of the M11P. Far and away, it is the best version of the M system. And despite a couple of quirks and annoyances, it is the best combination of pure photography while still having some of those modern, snappy, responsive touches from that new processor and things. But like, damn, could you really justify $9,200 and you still have to fork out a bunch of money for a lens? Like at bare minimum, you're looking at roughly $10,000 for a camera that can't really do anything. And if you want an actual Leica lens, it's closer to like 15,000. For that same price, you could buy any flagship camera and two top of the line zoom lenses on top of it. And that'll, that camera will do literally everything. The Leica M11P doesn't make logical sense because it's not a logical purchase. It's gotta be an emotional one because shooting with it is kind of emotional. It's kind of like buying a Porsche instead of like a Subaru. 
The best tools are often these high-end mirrorless cameras, the Sony A1s, the Canon R5, R5 Mark IIs, the Nikon Z8s, or heck, even their like higher prosumer lines of those cameras. Those are all fantastic cameras, but they are tools. They're like a hammer. They help you get a job done and they help you build something, but they aren't particularly inspiring and they aren't gonna have you gravitate towards them when you're looking to get inspired. The M11P, it's like an instrument. It's fun and it makes you wanna go out and play. And that's what kind of all Leicas are good at. The M11P is just kind of the best and most fun version of that instrument. So if you've got a whole bunch of cash, Maybe this will be the instrument for you. For me, I think I'm gonna stick with my Leica Q3 because while even that's not a logical camera, it's at least a little more reasonable. You get basically the same image, plus autofocus and video if you need it, and it's almost a third the price. So with that, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.